observe this shoulder girdle, we see that on the right side, yeah, the shoulder is in a little bit of downward rotation. The medial, uh, the angulus inferior has moved medial, a little bit cranial, and a little bit dorsal. That could be indicative of a lower trapezius weakness or a pec minor shortness. Now, if you then look from the front, we see that the right clavicle is lower than the left clavicle. We also see that the right shoulder girdle is more in protraction. So that would be more typical for a pec minor shortness. Then we look at bilateral shoulder flexion. And then we look at how far has the in angulus inferior moved. And here it is on the plumb line of the hair growth line. Can you turn around? And here it is behind the line. So with flexion, there is insufficient upward rotation of the scapula. Which again would be indicative of insufficient upward rotation of the scapula. So then we would do the formal muscle length test. So now you do an observation yeah, of um, how far is the shoulder girdle forward, yes or no. And then you do the formal test. With the formal test, with the hypothenar, you go medial to the coracoid process and you stabilize the sternum. With my middle finger, I'm at the posterior angle of the acromion and I assess how far posterior I can go. And on this side, the posterior angle of the chromium actually hits the plinth. So there's good length of the left pec minor. When I do the same thing on the right side, I feel much more resistance. <coughs> and I think you can see that I'm further away from the plinth. So that would confirm the hypothesis that there is a shortness of the pec minor on the right side. Now, PEC minor is an important interface for the nervous system. So let's have a look at her upper limb one. Mm -hmm. If I look at upper limb one on the left side, she describes pulling sensation at minus 30 degrees. Now I do the upper limb on the other side. And she describes a pulling sensation at minus 60 degrees. So we could generate the hypothesis that the shortness of a pec minor yeah, is causing some abnormal reactions of the upper limb. In order to prove that, we would try to lengthen the tissue. So you lengthen the tissue exactly the same way you do the test. So you fix the sternum and you push lateral, cranial, dorsal, and you would just hold it for a few seconds. And you would do that for five, six times, 10 seconds. What you also very often see clinically that if there is a shortness of the pec minor, there is also an insufficiency of the lower trapezius. So of course you would always also have to have a look at muscle function of the lower trapezius. And in the treatment, you would then also address that component by doing some re-education exercises for the lower trapezius.
So after having mobilized the pack miner a few times, of course, you reassess the length test of the pack miner. And that is already very different. But interesting would also be well, that there is a change of the upper limb one. Now we have the same response on the other side. So showing that this is a nice way of improving the neurodynamics. Thanks very much. Oh, very nice.